and we are back with another video everybody and today we're going to talk about this incredible investment that in five years will help me retire and never have to work again this car i expect in five years no later than 10 will quadruple in value putting myself in a position to be able to cash this thing out buy a motorhome and travel the world travel the country and go see all the beautiful sights because of this car, my retirement is secured. I will be good, better than any mutual fund, any real estate, any other investment I've ever owned. This car is going to be the thing that's going to change my entire financial outlook. And I'll tell you right now, this is only a scat pack. If you have a Hellcat, you are going to be so rich in five to 10 years from owning that Hellcat that I can't even say this anymore. I'm gonna throw up all over myself. I'm gonna be sick. I can't say this, I can't even say it to you all. So if you were following along, getting excited, I'm sorry, I was totally jerking with you, and that's not the case. In five years, this will be worth less. In five years, your Hellcat will be worth less. In 10 years, your Hellcat will be worth less. In 10 years, this thing will be worth less, and that is just a fact of life that we all have to own and understand, and I'm gonna help us understand that a little bit today, because like Mark Twain said, it's better to keep your mouth shut and let them believe you are a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. And at this point in the comment section and videos I've been watching out there, and I've addressed this already in the past, there are people out there that actually believe that by purchasing one of these cars, they are making one of the most wisest financial investments they've ever made. They are brilliant, delicate financial geniuses that someday will be selling seminars and training classes on the decision that they made to buy a Dodge Challenger Hellcat wide body or a Scat Pack Special Edition, and they are going to be rich, or even a Demon 170, and is going to appreciate in value. It'll be like that uh, Superbird that is now worth a million dollars in perfect condition, and that is the life-changing, game-changing decision that they're making for one of these cars. I'm gonna share with you why that is not the case. There's no way that could be the case. I will debate this with anyone here, and I'll tell you, with all that that I just said, I love this car. I love this model. I love this body style. I love the Charger. I think these are some of the greatest cars ever built in the history of our country. So there is nothing that's going to change, in my personal opinion, for how special and wonderful these cars are. I do believe your Hellcat is very special and it's amazing. And I know how much you all love them. But you've got to pull your head out of your rear and realize that these are cars that you that were built for nothing more than us to drive around and have fun in. They are not investments unless you have a lot of time to waste and wait and wait and wait and wait and let this car sit there and do nothing and keep low miles on it and go nowhere, which is a horrible crying shame. Now let's jump into my beautiful investment here. <laughs> That's already depreciated value because now you can find these things going for less than MSRP and I paid MSRP thinking I was a genius. Now I'm good with it because I, you know, I use this for business. I use this for YouTube and I enjoy the car. So if I lose five, six, ten thousand dollars $10,000 when I do finally decide to sell this thing, if that day comes, so be it. That's how things go with cars. But if I sit on this thing for 30 solid years, just maybe, just maybe, I could get my car back, but that would mean I can't drive it. That would mean I gotta keep the miles really, really low, put it in my garage, bubble wrap it, and hope that it's still in good condition when I take it back out 20, 30 years from now. But let's talk about this. I've got a couple examples that I think will shock you. So let's get started. So I've been getting comments, and I'll put one up on the screen, where a guy says, just imagine what this, I think he was talking about the Demon 170, what this car will be worth in 10 years. And I've seen videos out there, what the car is gonna, what do you think this car is gonna be worth in five years? My good friend and amazing YouTuber, Hemi Muscle, put a picture up on YouTube in his community page today that said, what do you think this Hellcat that's 59 grand will be worth in five years? And it's interesting to hear the comments. So let me share with you the comments that people made on Hemi Muscle's post, which are classic. Now, most of the people, which makes me feel, feel have more faith in, in humanity, at least the, the Dodge car culture, the car fanatics like myself, seem to have really gotten the point at this point. So, of course, over time, I'm sure the comments on his post will 
get stupider and stupider. But here's one. I won't say the guy's name, but I'll put it up on the screen here. I would imagine it would increase in value if the owners take care of it. All major car manufacturers are going away from gasoline vehicles and going electric. Meaning when there's less of something, typically the value of those things go up. Basic economics. This is also called the Dunning-Kruger effect. Why stupid people think they're smart. And I'm not bashing this guy. I'm just saying it is running rampant in our country, in the world today, including myself, that sometimes I think I'm smarter than I really am. I find out later on that things I've said, things I've done are, are incredibly stupid. And I realize at that point that, oh my gosh, I walk around thinking I'm smart and I'm really an idiot. I can handle things, I'm smart. Not like everybody says. So the difference between me and a lot of these folks is I realize it and I question and I do research and I read and I dig and I try to understand things so that I don't sound stupid any more than necessary. But when I see this, basic economics is, first of all, we know that the electric whole farce is collapsing under its own weight. That's happening now and it's just the beginning. Just wait a few more years as things get worse. Knowing that that's going to happen, we're going to see that whole electric car nightmare fall apart. Does that mean that the Hemi V8s are coming back? Who knows? Here's what I know. I know something will come back that we're going to like. Something's going to be out there for the enthusiasts, and it's not going to be electric. I can pretty much guarantee you that this is going to fall apart. So, but he believes it because he was told this. He was told this as he watches the news and, and turns on his TV and says, oh, it's all going electric. And he believes it, yet he doesn't go drive by a Tesla charging station when there's 47 cars in line waiting to charge their, their car when I drive by at 120 miles an hour on my way to my meeting with a quarter tank knowing it's going to take me three minutes to fill it back up and keep going. That, yes, will things get better? Probably. I'm not going to get an electric car nightmare. But this guy bought into it, hook, line, and sinker completely. And he's convinced that, remember the question, what do you think this is going to be worth in five years? Five years, he thinks it's going to increase in value. I just want to pull every last hair out of my head when I read stuff like that. Then this other guy writes, once they start pushing for everyone to have no choice but electric cars, these gonna be antiques. Okay, cool. What's the definition of an antique when it comes to cars or anything? And it's generally, I think, around 40 to 45 years old. So 45 years from now, these cars will be considered antiques. Not in five years. These cars can't suddenly become an antique in five years. Now, he didn't specify. Maybe he understood that and he was speaking into the future that, man, once all this electric stuff comes and whatever, 45 years from now, yes, if your car still exists on the planet, hasn't ended up in a scrapyard, um, hit a, you know, spun into a curb, totaled, whatever it is, and the miles are really, really low and it's been bubble wrapped in your garage and you pull it out as one of the last remaining 200 cars ever to be built in the in the world and all the other ones are gone destroyed and trashed and you, you got a rare rare antique good condition Hellcat scat pack doesn't matter what it is it's probably going to be very very sought after um, will it be worth a million dollars I don't think so because if you look at the Superbird for example the production numbers were so low that if you compare the production numbers of that car versus the production numbers of these cars, it's significantly lower. I mean, significantly lower. And I'm talking about the Hemi cars, significantly lower production level. So problem with these cars now, there's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of them out there. And there's a possibility that the last year of this car does not rain as the greatest year. That could very well happen. We don't know what will happen over the next year with the condition, the build quality, the issues with the cars. I mean, I already had an issue with my car that could make this the year that nobody wants. Who knows? We don't know. But to predict that in five years this car will go up in value is extremely naive at best. Now, I'm saying this, I'm doing this video so that I can get more of these cars out on the road and driven and enjoyed because I will tell you right now, I have a conversation with my dad every single day. The man is fighting dementia and Alzheimer's and 
if there's any theme to most of our conversations when he's very lucid and we're having a good talk is all the things that he regrets, all the things he wishes he would have done better. His apolog He's apologizing to me for not having been the greatest dad in the world. And I tell him he was the greatest dad in the world. He still is the greatest dad in the world, but he carries that weight, a weight of regret for, for, for what, 74 years of, of not taking different chances or doing things or enjoying certain things, things that he looks back and says, I wish I would have embraced that time more. I will tell you all, you will one day be st sitting there eating baby food, wearing a diaper at 75 years old going, damn it. I wish I would have drove my car, but hey, it's in the garage with, you know, 300 miles on it, and now at least I can cash in and get that money so that I can buy a new wheelchair or a surplus of diapers. That's why I'm doing this video, so you'll drive and enjoy the car, because regrets are horribly painful when you're really, really old. I have no regrets. I have spent so much money living my life and losing money, just losing hundreds of thousands of dollars in pursuit of great experiences, lots of fun, and embracing the passion of owning a great, fun car. And now I'm rounding probably 55 of these things, and I'm not gonna stop here. I'm gonna keep going as long as I can get in and out of the car and drive that thing and enjoy it and not crash in anything. I'm gonna keep going until I am old and gray, and I suggest you all do that too. So let's talk about when a car is going to go up in value, if it's gonna go up in value. Well, if you look over history, whether it's an exotic car, extremely rare hyper car, or even the Superbird, or a Lexus LFA, or some of those old Defender Land Rovers, go watch Doug DeMuro's video, and he explains that it's generally the ugliest, least desirable cars that ultimately go up in value. So if you look back, the Lexus LFA, they couldn't sell it. The Viper, the last year of the Viper in 2017, they couldn't sell it. They had they had to cancel and end production because of poor sales. No one wanted those things. That was an, a not a sought after car. Yet those cars in production levels in the hundreds, not thousands, and you've got the ACR that's holding its value and gone up in value because there's there's hundreds available, less than that, much less than that, compared to the thousands of these cars that those have gone up in value, but they were the least desirable cars built, and now they're wildly desirable because, because they were so undesirable, just like the Superbird, they couldn't get rid of those cars back when they came out in the 70s. So if you look back, the cars that they stopped building, they cut the production, and they had such a low number that everybody hated, wham, end up being worth a fortune someday. Well, the challenge with the Hellcats and the Scat Packs is they're very sought after. Everybody wants them, so they're minting them like crazy. And this year, they're minting them even more. They said they're gonna build 3,000 demons, 300 for Canada, 3,000 for the US, and then boom, a week or so ago, they come out and say, just kidding, we're gonna build, what is it, 60 more. What's gonna stop them from building another 100 more? So the more they build, the less these get, these go up in value. Now, everybody thought that when the Hellcat Durango came out, that that thing was gonna be a just go to the moon car. And then of course they came out with it again this year and they're gonna roll it out again next year. So that car is gonna have a lot of them out there. So you can't use the Viper in 2017 as a good example. So my point to all of you is, what makes a car worth a lot of money? Well, obviously great condition, but then it's generally to be a classic. It needs to get to that place. History shows us that it, it needs to generally, there's exceptions to every rule, but needs to get to that place of being a classic, which is around 20 to 25 years. You hit 20 to 25 years, that car hits classic status, at that point, that car tends to start finding its legs. Another 10 years to 30 to 35 years, you'll see that car, if it's very rare, there's not a lot of great examples out there that exist, start to find its legs and suddenly skyrocket in value. Do I think the Hellcats will do that? The challenge is, is that there's so many flippers out there, there's so many collectors out there, there's so many dealers out there that they've bought their own cars and are keeping them in storage, that there's not gonna be a human Humongous, humongous shortage of these cars that are being collected even 20 years from now. 
but keep in mind there's almost no example of a car very few examples of cars that have gone up in that are at these production levels in a matter of five years or even ten years and unfortunately what tends to happen is they end up going down in value and they continue to drop and they go they become very undesirable as all the new hot cool stuff comes out and that journey over a 10 15 20 year period is a rough journey for cars it's a rough journey for special cars they tend to and especially mass produced cars where they degrade the depreciate in value so badly just like the 2018 demon it, based on the, the theory that some of these people think is that these cars are going to go up in value the 2018 demon is up in value from msrp but down in value from what people paid for it with the markups back in 2018 so if you paid 150,000 for a demon and you kept the miles low and in good condition right now you'll you'll get 150,000 out of it but Brad, there's, they're all over the place for 200,000. Exactly. Asking price is not sold price. In real estate, we have to explain to people this all the time. And in cars, I have to explain this to all of you. In many cases, you'll never know what a car sold for, which is why I said in my last video with Max, some of you are saying, oh, I'm all of a sudden good with, with markups. I am not good with markups. I want you to go in there and I want you to bring your big giant jar of baby oil and lather yourself up and tackle him to the ground i am going to wrestle you as much as i love the guy and i think he's awesome and steal those cars because i am ultimately a consumer advocate and i want you all to win so let's get back to it takes 20 years so five years 10 years that car is going to go down in value it's not going to go up in value it's going to going to be a weight around your neck if you're sitting on it that long you think about it we all start to think that well five years is a long time from now it's not think about five years ago all the cars that were on the market and all the cars that absolutely were awesome and amazing that discontinued they stopped making that have yet to have gone up in value and will need to hit 20 to 25 years before and then a lot of factors will have to be in play and then maybe that car will start finding its legs and in many cases it might take 30 40 or 50 years for that to happen so unless you have that much time drive the hell out of the car enjoy the car take the car out on the road and as I shared with one of the commenters is look I have an exotic car I have a 2005 Lamborghini and do the math on that thing it's it's gonna it's approaching 20 years old that car at, at 18 19 years old right now let's say 18 years 18 years old right now is is worth about at best on a great day if I find somebody that was drinking I might get a hundred hundred and five thousand dollars out of it most likely if I want to sell that thing in a, in a month if I want to sell it quickly I need to come down to probably ninety thousand dollars maybe even a little bit less to sell it fast in this economy this market and the reason I say that is because the economy has a lot to do with it and a lot of us our thought process clouded by this last three four years with the pandemic where anything and everything increased in value making us believe that that is a real true possibility understanding that was artificially created based on a supply chain issue and extremely low governmental promoted low interest rates that and then PPP money and all that those free checks that were mailed out drove these cars to the moon only for them to dramatically crash at this point which we are witnessing it right now at this point in time so that means that short of another pandemic an extreme shortage of cars and some other outside influences extremely low interest rates that and then let's just say this electric thing actually getting getting traction which they won't but actually getting traction and sticking around long term I think you're still screwed and, and you're, you're not gonna make money on that car so those of you who want to comment that this is a great investment for five years you're wrong sorry 10 years I wish you were right because I'd be sitting on a gold mine right now with this special edition one of 200 manual live sublime green challengers with the shaker hood beautiful car 
But if you think it's going to go up in value in 10 years, you're wrong. You are going to lose your ever-loving ass over the next five years on your Hellcat, on your Scat Pack. So what's it going to be worth? What's it going to be worth, Brad? Can you just tell me what it's going to be worth? Well, here's what it's going to be worth. Your, your let's say, $100,000 jailbreak red eye in five years is probably going to be worth about fifty dollars to $60,000. I'm sorry. I, that's just the case. Now, if you factor in inflation, maybe maybe you'll you'll get a little bit more for it, but the equivalent will be fifty to sixty thousand dollars in five years from now. If you drive the car and use the car, if you keep no miles on it, if you just lock it in your garage, you're likely to be able to maybe get I don't know, let's just say eighty five thousand dollars for the car. People aren't going to be wanting to pay huge money for these cars five years from now because there's going to be so much other stuff out there. If you have a Demon 170, that one might have a chance because it was such a special car, but it's still high production compared to the Superbirds or compared to the Vipers, but that one might have a chance at holding its value in five years. And when I say holding its value, if today's value is 150000 which is what I think it's really pretty much worth. I mean, I'd like to think MSRP, but the reality of it is, is based on the, the, the pressures put by the market, it's probably worth $150,000. That five years from now, it's probably going to still be worth $150,000. I'm sorry, it just is. Now, if you keep it in pristine condition, it's still not five years. I think you're going to wait 20 years before you see that thing skyrocket and you got to hope that a whole bunch of other people crash their cars total them destroy them catch on fire you know that there's just less of them end up being left on the planet so with that everybody i hope this helps you all understand i'm not trying to bash on these cars i love these cars i'm just trying to get some sense talked into everybody so that they don't think that you just bought a bugatti veyron which by the way is worth less than it was when it was new and those cars tend to follow the market of supercars and hypercars. In this last three years, while yes, these things all went to the moon, they're settling back down. This is not a Ferrari 488 or a Ferrari 458. And even those are at or below what they were selling for as new, very low production, hand-built, exotic, rare cars. These aren't those cars and we need to stop. Go pop your hood and just look at all the weld marks and the, the sheet metal and everything. This is not compared to a Ferrari, even my Lamborghini and my Lamborghini is not skyrocketing in value. That car, my car was what, $200,000, $250,000 brand new and I'd be like dancing if I got $100,000 out of it. Yeah, we think this thing is going to be worth so much more and I've got a, a spectacular, one of the best sounding best V10s ever put in a Lamborghini in my Gallardo and that car still has not started to appreciate value. Now it's held really well, but mind you, that's a small number. So with that everybody, hope this helps. Please like, subscribe, comment, share your opinion below, argue with me if you want, or just comment and say, you know what, you're right man, buy the car, drive the car, don't be sitting there when you're old wishing you would have drove the car, wishing you would have had more fun with the car wishing you would have spent more time with your family, wishing you would have taken more vacations, wishing you would have went fishing with your dad more, wishing you would have spent more time with your mom. Don't have regrets. Get your ass in your Dodge Challenger or Charger and go have fun. Drive the hell out of it and frame every speeding ticket you get as a badge of glory that you used the car the way it was supposed to be used. And with that, I am done. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.